Hello and welcome to the Gaggle Bobble Challenge and if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli. With me today, of course, is uh, co-founder of the Gaggle, Peter Lavelle. So Peter, um, the, the, there's something about US policymakers. I mean, they're, they're, they're continually uh, thinking and finding creative uh, ways of screwing over um, other powers. And um, often uh, they would be adversaries of the United States and quite often also um, supposed friends and allies uh, of the United States. But they're always thinking it ways of how, how can we make sure that um, you know, we've edged out, you know, an ally, whether it's Australia in the case of AUKUS or, uh, or or the Europeans with the liquefied natural gas, you know, always with Nord Stream, you know, they're always thinking aloud. Um, and so the latest is the Black Sea. And uh, because uh, the, the um, Americans have uh, now focused on the Black Sea. And, and there's a reason for that. Um, they, they, they've pushed out um, Russian energy um, uh, imports in Europe and managed to replace the natural gas imports with their own liquefied natural gas. But there's something that, that's worrying them, and that is the, the Turk stream. Um, they said, we've got Nord Stream, that's out of the way, but there is this Turk stream, which is going th uh, through Turkey and, and you know, countries such as Bulgaria, Serbia, uh, Hungary are all kind of enjoying this. And, uh, and so therefore they, they want this destroyed as much as they destroyed Nord Stream. And, and there have been a number of terrorist attacks. Russia keep saying with uh, thwarting uh, terrorist attacks. And we have to think that um, there's going to be more and more of these sort of uh, um, attacks. Well, and, as, and as George pointed out, with, you know, with even friends, I mean, Turkey is a NATO member, okay? That's right, exactly. That's right. As, as are, you know, Bulgaria, which is a, a beneficiary of the uh, Turk Stream. And remember, there was the South Stream before that, before Turk Stream, there was South Stream, and the Americans managed to, uh, you know, bring that to an end. So this is their target. But they clearly, um, the Americans really want to move in in a big way uh, to the Black Sea in order to just Get, get rid of all um, you know, uh, en energy um, uh, imports um, from uh, Russia. So there was an interesting article um, in um, Responsible Statecraft, and you drew my attention to it uh, yesterday. And, um, and I want to sort of look, look into that because that, that g gave you a certain idea of what, the, what US policymakers uh, are thinking uh, about the Black Sea. And um, And um, here, this is the um, the article in Responsible Stake Up. The Ukraine war has been a, quote, great bargain for U.S. in the Black Sea. And says officials boast that Washington and NATO's foothold has opened up much desired energy opportunities. And um, <clears throat> also keep in mind, the United States, when it says about energy opportunity, the United States doesn't need energy. The United States is, is chock a block with energy. I mean, you know, it could easily be, you know, the biggest energy exporter in the world. I mean, it's only because of all sorts of environmental uh, restrictions, the Biden green, green energy and all that nonsense. But it, the Americans are not short on energy. So when they say this is an energy bonanza, they mean how can we control energy and determine who gets it and who doesn't get it? <laughs> Or, or how how can we control other people's energy? <laughs> exactly, that's it. How can we control other people's energy? U.S. officials view the war in Ukraine as a way of achieving geopolitical objectives in the Black Sea, an energy-rich region that connects Russia, Eastern Europe, and the Middle East. At two recent Senate hearings, State Department officials portrayed the war as a means of transforming the geopolitics of energy in the Black Sea. As long as Ukrainians keep fighting, they said, there remains a potential to transform the Black Sea into a new market for the European Union. Oh, so here's another reason for the war. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, okay. so you know, follow the logic here. The, the war is good, presumably because it fosters the idea that there's energy instability. So the war is good because if there's energy instability, the Americans can come in and say, hey, we're, we're the answer to your problems. Um, so um, this into a new market for the European Union, um, the officials envisioned a new energy corridor that provides Europe with oil and natural gas 
from uh, Central, Central Asia. Asia. That's right. And then the United States has long recognized the geostrategic importance of the Black Sea region. State Department official James O'Brien told the Senate, O'Brien is a, is a veteran State Department. He's been around since forever. So he's a, he's a senior figure there. Not only does the Black Sea border three NATO allies and several NATO partners, but it is also a vital corridor for the movement of goods, including Ukrainian grain and other products bound for world market and hosts significant untapped energy resources. While US officials have been open about their intentions of using Ukraine to weaken Russia, they have been careful about claiming that they are making hard-headed geopolitical calculations. Um, uh, when O'Brien spoke to a Senate committee on October the 25th, he provided a blunter explanation of US goals. Not only did he portray the war as a very good bargain for the United States, it's a nice, very good bargain, um, citing the fact that, quote, Ukrainians are paying the bulk of the cost by doing nearly all the fighting. But he also described it as an opportunity, which are doing all the bulk, you know, they're also doing all the dying, which is which is kind of an added bonus. Part of part of the bargain. Yeah. Part of the bargain, exactly. But but he also described it as an opportunity for the United States to achieve major geopolitical objectives. One he indicated were incredibly exciting. <clears throat> so remember when the when the Americans uh, response to the Nord Stream pipeline uh destruction hey this is a great opportunity so here they, 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 this guy's saying hey the war in ukraine it's a great opportunity for us and it's incredibly exciting um so hey let's let's just keep this war going for uh some time one key objective o'brien explained is to strengthen nato's presence in the black sea the problem with with that you know i mean because and i think this is um where it's all leading is that Turkey has so far it reluctant. I mean, there is the Montreux Convention. I mean, which does limit um, foreign warships in the Black Sea. I mean, you know, if you're Bulgaria and Romania and Turkey, I mean, you can have warships in the Black Sea. But other powers, such as the United States, as there's, there's only very limited warships that they can have in the Black Sea. And this is something that's really grating <laughs> on uh, on on NATO. And and obviously they're trying to get around it. And so find some ways in which they can uh, push the Turks into abandoning this Montreux Convention. Well, it, it also, it's it's very interesting here. I, maybe it was the one before where, um, you know, um, Ukraine and Romania and Bulgaria, they're uh, um, uh, members of NATO, obviously, and other NATO partners. But, but Russia still hasn't been mentioned here. No. <laughs> it's a pretty big Black Sea power, everybody. Big Black Sea, exactly. <laughs> that, 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 that's right. Um <clears throat> Given that NATO is present in the Black Sea through member states and partner countries, O'Brien saw an opportunity to use the war to increase NATO's military presence across the region's lands, airspace, and water. So, you know, so okay, great, we can, you know, increase some um, NATO's presence. But again, you got to kind of find some way around this, um, this Turkish obduracy over the Montreux Convention. Um, and then another key objective O'Brien noted is to pull Ukraine and other Black Sea countries away from Russia while integrating them into the European Union. The entire region he envisioned becomes a place where we're in a very good position to control what happens as the rules get made. As uh, the rules get made. <laughs> oh, so that, what is that? Creating political facts. Political facts on the ground. But as, as O'Brien... <clears throat> talks like this, you kind of realize that um, Russia really had no choice but to do what they did over, over Crimea. I mean, you know, they, they, knew, they knew what the Americans were up to. I mean, you know, this is going to be very quick. You know, these these the coup in Kiev, they're going to take Crimea right away. I mean, they, they're, they're not going to mess wait, around. Wait, how, how fast was it, George? I forget now. I mean, it was... <laughs> Really fast. It was fast. I mean, so they 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 knew that exactly this is this is the plan, and like and they cheerfully talk about this. Yeah, you know, we're basically going to turn the Black Sea into a NATO lake. Oh, I mean, they've already they boast that the Baltic is now a NATO lake, um, uh, and so they were well, great. Now we'll have the Black Sea as a NATO lake. You know, uh, it, it it went, went uh, after when the, when the coup had been completed. Um, I've always envisioned, and I wish we somebody would um, uh, release. Uh, 
um, uh, uh, Victoria Newland's emails. But the, the real prize for her was Crimea, in line of very much what this article is all about. Because when Crimea would have closed the deal. It just yep. would have closed the deal. I agree. I agree. Um, and then in another major admission, O'Brien acknowledged that Washington aspires to create oil and gas pipelines that lead from Central Asia to Europe. Claiming that Central Asia relies too much on China and Russia to export it. <laughs> I always love it. You, they care so much. You know, I'm, I'm so worried about you. I mean, you just- Well, well like, let's, let's say, George, I mean, okay, okay and, and another layer of that, okay? So they're talking about this energy opportunity for the European Union. The same people that destroyed the Nord Stream pipeline. I mean, it's, I mean, is the author even kind of vaguely aware of how absurd That's right. the these same, words exactly. are? That's right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, you know, dependence, you were getting your energy uh, from Russia without any problems. Never, never once had the Soviet Union and then Russia created any problems at all. The only problems that arose were when Ukraine was started to siphon off uh, gas that was going through Ukrainian territory that was basically they were just siphoning off, you know, and then selling it themselves. Um, that's the only problems. And now they've destroyed these pipelines and now paying four times as much for their energy uh, as they were before. And then so we're very worried about this dependence. So, and and who, yeah. who is who is weaponizing energy politics? <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Weaponizing. I mean, they. Um, and O'Brien reviewed multiple possibilities for alternative pipelines through Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Turkey. Um, so that when the, so therefore, you know, that's where NATO is heading next. You know, they want to. Well, put... isn't it interesting that Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia are all mentioned here? Okay, it's yeah. all part of the big, big plan here. That's right. And what, what's interesting is that. And it's already been been um, referenced is that you know pull Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia into uh, the EU, and who has control over EU energy policy? Washington. Exactly. 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 Um, and uh, as, as State Department official Jeffrey Pyatt. Oh, Jeffrey good Pyatt. old friend. Good friend. Yeah. Good friend, you know, former uh, the the man who was um, U.S. ambassador to Ukraine at the time of the coup. Um, that when and played a major role in breaking up and damaging the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Yes, that's right. Exactly. That's that's exactly right. Um, and yeah, while he was he was ambassador to Greece, you know, which is a nice nice place for him to be located. Um, so who now leads the U.S. energy diplomacy? Well, what a shock! Diplomacy. <laughs> diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> diplomacy. There we go. The diplomacy. In other words, you know, you know, uh, um, I was Harold Pinter. I think you know. I think he famously said, you know, I, I can summarize American diplomacy as, you know, you do what we say, or I'll kick your fucking head in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I like those shorter versions, you know, because it really it it, it um, focus your it focus your attention. Yes, that's right, exactly. You know, Pinter, you know, he was a master of language, so you got to go. Yeah, that that I can just summarize the language. Um, uh, explain that the United States is facing uh, extraordinary opportunities in the Black Sea region, which he described as one of the fulcrums, fulcrums. of the energy map of Europe today. A U.S. senator is talking about the fulcrum of ener the energy map of Europe. That's good. right. So the yeah, en energy map. So here the Americans are deciding what the energy map of uh, Europe will be. In other words, Europe will become totally a dependency of the United States. I mean, the United States is now going to determine where you're going to get your energy from. You know, we, we, we will control um, the Central Asia. And uh, and then we'll control these pipelines. And then uh, this is, you know, we, we will de determine um how you get your energy but don't don't get dependent on on russia and china that that's that's terrible um one of the most significant regional transformations Pyatt explained is the redrawing of the energy map around the black sea that's taking place it includes new pipeline infrastructure such as the southern gas corridor uh, to bring gas from central asia to european uh, consumers so again, you know, you 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 see how this, the the U.S. policy, that whole thing with Nord Stream, how it was always a key uh, ingredient of of, uh, of U.S. foreign policy. 
while the war has created new opportunities to transport natural gas from Central Asia to Europe, it has also made it much more difficult for Russia to export natural gas to Europe. How, how did, why was that? I mean, let me just think. What, what, what could have made it more difficult? Huh. I can't think. Um, <laughs> whereas Russian natural gas made up 45% of EU's natural gas imports in 2021, it is now down to 15%. And again, it, it's, it's quite extraordinary that this article, which appears in Responsible Staker, makes no mention of Nord Stream, you know, what happened to Nord Stream. No, I mean, I, it was, you see, when, when you leave it that way, whereas Russian natural gas made up 45% of the EU's natural gas imports in 2021, it is down to 15%. But there's no why. <laughs> no, no why. No, just, yeah. That's right. it, it was the Europeans don't want it anymore. The Russians That's right. won't export well, yeah, it anymore. We don't, we don't need it. You know, it's we, we're good. You know, we, we can be cold in the winter. You know, no problem. <laughs> just we don't we just don't need it. Um, as we look into the future, you're going to have a Europe which has decoupled from uh, Russian energy supplies. But has, I think that, that there is a mistake here. Has been decoupled. It has right. forcefully right. been decoupled. That's right. That's right. And, and and again, I mean, and this article doesn't really go into it, but the, there is this issue, which is Turkstream, which the Americans have <laughs> focused on, you know, that because they are, there is still um, energy coming from Russia via um, this, uh, the, the pipeline through Turkey, which goes to Serbia, Bulgaria, and Hungary. And that's where the, the Americans are now focusing, which, you know, hey, it's this is the Black Sea. Um, and then um, uh, so far, the major winners, ma the major winner in the geopolitical contest has been U.S. energy companies. As Russian exports to Europe have decreased, U.S. exports have increased. <laughs> positioning the United States to become one of Europe's major suppliers. All by design. <laughs> um, if Europe can acquire more natural gas from Central Asia, then Russia could be potentially excluded from the European market altogether. Well, you know, th this is all cheerleading and all that, but I, I, the author of this article, I would just like to point out, Russia is already bake that in okay right. and it is it is a, a, a reacting accordingly and there's no shortage of customers for natural gas in the world right. and all of putting all this trust in central asia well I, I think the chinese have a couple of things to say about the, the right. development of energy resources in central asia which was the deal as i've said many times on this podcast it was the only good thing that ever came out of the Yeltsin presidency is that Yeltsin and the Chinese leadership decided not to compete in Central Asia, but to work together. So I, they're a part, they are a definitely a player here, okay, and right. which is yeah. not being mentioned whatsoever. But I think that, you know, we, we can see already the next wars, you know, which, which yeah. are coming. Um, when you start moving into Central Asia, you're not you're antagonizing Russia and you're antagonizing China because all these pipeline stuff that goes together with NATO. I mean, they're not, that's not just going to be pipeline. They're going to have they want a NATO control of this uh, territory, and there's a limit to you know how, how much uh, patience uh, uh, the, you know the Chinese uh, and, and the Russians are going to have. Clearly, they they might really focus laser like focus on Kazakhstan. I mean that that's because it's that is really mineral. Uh, resource rich. rich, and they 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 want Kazakhstan uh, in, in the NATO orbit, um, and so uh, anyway. Uh, but a major question remains: How long will U.S. officials continue viewing the war as a good deal for America, as O'Brien described it? Although Ukraine is paying the bulk of the cost in terms of fighting, the number of deaths keep rising, and there is no end in sight. Well, that's the that's a, the sixty four thousand dollar question. Well, you can, know, can that's Ukraine go on fighting before collapsing. Sorry to say, but it's cost of doing business, friend. Exactly, that's the cost of doing business. So, but quite by chance, I came across um, this NATO members nearing deal on a joint Black Sea mine clearing force. So you know, you know, you think, okay, well, that's a mine clearing, which is um, sounds uh, noble. Sounds exactly. noble. Oh, well, that sounds very, very good. And it says that NATO members, Bulgaria, Turkey, and Romania, are close to reaching an agreement on the creation of a joint mine clearing force to address the issue of mines drifting in their respective territorial waters, which the Ukrainians put into that's the right. water. That's right. Um, the proposed plan 
would be peaceful in nature. The moment you hear, oh, oh when you, oh, oh there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's a boom. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's that's when you you reach for your gun. You know, when I when I hear <laughs> that's right. peaceful in nature, that's when I reach for my gun. <laughs> Draw. <laughs> Um, and focused on reducing the danger that errant mines pose to shipping routes through the Black Sea, it would be considered a NATO effort. It would so that, not, so on the one hand, they say it would, it's not a NATO. Oh, it would not be considered a NATO effort. But of course, it's NATO powers because if it's not a NATO effort, why don't you bring in uh, you know others? You know, so everyone who has a, a an interest in uh, removing mines. No, no, well, just... I mean, be because it's Bulgaria and it's Turkey and it's Romania, ergo, it is a NATO a project. NATO yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, Stoltenberg, has, uh, I have no oh, input. Nope, nothing yeah. to do with it. I, nope. I with me. I'm up, I'm going to Finland. I have a problem. <laughs> the, the border, there's a, there's a crisis on the border. I'm up to Finland, exactly. It would, however, be the first joint action of the Black Sea allies since the beginning of the full-scale invasion. Well, you but, heard it in this article, the Black Sea Allies. I Black like sea. the that ring has a nice ring to it's it. A nice ring to it, yeah, exactly. But quite by chance, there was an article, it was in September, about um, m using minesweepers to increase allies in the Black Sea. That's in September. You well, know, this is saying the quiet part out loud. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. That's it. Let's we'll have minesweepers. That's a, that's a neat idea. Sounds good. Oh, well, it's a minesweeper. You know, all very reasonable. But he says, yeah, to increase allied presence in the Black Sea. I always hate it when they use the word allied. You know, you know, you mean NATO? What allies? You know, the, the, you know. But but anyway, this is. Um, it is in America's interest to explore other ways to export grain from Ukraine. A new alternative route that excludes Russia would minimize, to the extent possible, Russian leverage over global food prices. Okay, about... well, a little pause right there. So why is the United States so, you know, you know, dead set on getting Ukrainian grain to market? Oh, the United States, after the coup, they brought, they opened up the door to agriculture to Ukraine. A lot, you know, agriculture is a very interesting thing. Agriculture, you have to have really, really deep pockets to get started. But once things start picking up pace, right. is one of the only businesses in the world where profit goes like this. Yeah. Okay. And that's why Joe Biden's getting calls all the time. Hey, we got to get this stuff to market, Mr. Yep. President. Yes. You made this deal, remember? Yeah, yep. exactly. There's a lot of money uh, in owning yep. uh, agricultural land. Um, and uh, and they, 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 they bought up uh, Ukrainian land um, after the, uh, Maidan. Um, so they were very unhappy. Um, you know, uh, about the war. And thus we had the hysteria, remember we talked about it a number of times, about the hunger. There's apparently going to be mass starvation in the world unless Ukraine can get grain to market. You think, well, how does that? I mean, you know, Ukraine isn't such a huge grain exporter compared to Russia. Russia's very exports, you know, much, much more than Ukraine, uh, and as does as does the United States, as does Canada. But oh no, no, Ukraine is the breadbasket of the world. You know, you take Ukraine out, and you know, there's been worldwide famine. Uh, yeah, well, it's 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 Western agro business that's yes, involved here. Exactly. Not you. You. Yeah, it comes from Ukraine, but it's it's Western agro business. Exactly. They they're making money, and you know, if they can't get their grain out, then they're not making money, and you know that's a, a problem. Um, the need to ensure safe passage of ships through the second grain corridor also creates an opportunity to bolster. U.S. and allied presence in the Black Sea. Everything is always an opportunity to bolster U.S. and allied presence, you know. <laughs> you know like without running sea. afoul of Turkish neutrality. Exactly. Um, without running afoul of Turkish neutrality. When, when did uh, Turkey become neutral? I uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm wondering when Turkey... <laughs> <laughs> the United States, I mean, it's one of the earliest members of NATO. I can't remember what year they, they joined, but it was quite early on. Yeah, very early on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the United States should work with uh, European allies to transfer minesweepers to Romania. Minesweepers. 
So what a, what a surprise. And suddenly, you know, a couple of months later, we're talking about minesweepers uh, in, the, in the Black Sea. To a NATO member and a Black Sea nation that Turkey has close relations with uh, to establish a new route. Um, and then to account for drifting mines, the United States and its European allies should consider assisting Romania with clearance uh, divers or loaning clearance diving equipment to the Romanian Navy. Minesweepers are purely defensive, purely defensive, <laughs> do not pose a threat to the Russian Navy. It's always defensive. Oh, oh, only NATO minesweepers <laughs> only are exactly. defensive. And of course, you remember, if you bring in minesweepers, they have to be accompanied by okay. warships because somebody has to- Convoy. Yeah, that, that, so, um, but so, <laughs> You know, um, there were a couple zingers in this one. I like couple, it. Yes, yes. But you know, it was very interesting that if you remember that interview that um, uh, Viktor Orban gave to uh, Tucker, I think is the most recent one. You remember he started talking about South Stream, and um, and and he, uh, about, no, it's not South Stream, uh, Tur Turk Stream, and he said they better not try to sabotage Turk Stream, you know, because you know we're not like the Germans. We're not just going to sit still and and accept it. When he said that, you had a you, he has a sense. He knows what he's talking about. I mean, they're better, you know, we're not like the Germans. We're not just going to sit on our hands. So he, he Orban, is fully expecting that uh, uh, the the Americans or somebody, in this case, the Ukrainians, the Ukrainians have been caught red-handed trying to attack uh, Turk Stream. So that he, you know, this is where the next line well, of attack is going to take George, place. And George, let, let's say the obvious. This this um, a Turk stream would have already been targeted if it hadn't been Turk stream, right. okay? Right. Because the Turks will not take well to that. No, at that, all. that's exactly that, that's exactly right. That that that's right. So yeah, Hungary said, well, we're not going to sit on our hands. But Hungary, you know, it's a, that's a small country. But uh, Turkey is not a small country, and and, and you're absolutely right. Turk, Turk the Turks were. But that's why who has been caught? It's always the Ukrainians, you know, they keep getting caught. You know, the Russians said, well, we caught a few, you know, more Ukrainians trying to blow up <laughs> the Turk stream. <laughs> well, they, they have a colonel on, in custody, okay? I mean, oh, yeah, the I mean, colonel. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah, sure I, they'll I, keep I, him in administrative, you know, detention while the, they were planning on the Turk stream, okay? Because <laughs> we already got the culprit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you got Nord Stream and Turk Stream. You know, I, I'm a flexible guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, but this guy, you know, he, he was, you know, he it's part of his genetic code to destroy pipelines. He was just born that way. You know? Exactly. It's just like, you know, the, I just don't like pipelines. I mean, Who knew? Who knew? Me. <laughs> that's me i mean some people you know they you know they, they don't like this kind of ice cream i just don't like pipelines <laughs> these articles are so revealing okay again no sense of perspective of self-reflection um um, when you have to write, minesweepers are defensive. When you write that, you know that's right. <laughs> the that's chicken's right. up. Come on. That's right. That, 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 you know, that, that, that's right. You know, right. Uh, American F-16s, they are only defensive, it's, George. It's, they were designed that way. Come on, you it. know that. Yes, yes. That's right. <laughs> and they've all got this... Um, uh the, this uh, lingo this you know this is now part of nato speak so was it biden was saying something like you know went to the um i think he, when he was talking to some democrats who were unhappy about his policy of uh of you know supporting uh israel he's saying i'm just trying to avoid world war three you know you know that, that's why i'm sending all this uh, weaponry to israel i'm just trying to avoid world war three <laughs> that that's what i do i mean you know just it's all defensive um, and and, and, yeah, and this is, but all of these articles that show you that American foreign policy is just a bull in a china shop. I mean, right. it is knocking everything down in its path. Okay, and it doesn't give a hoot on who it hurts. Okay, no. well, our allies. Well, that's what, because they're allies, they'll suck it up because they're allies. Okay, they're our I mean, allies. Exactly. This arrogance, this arrogance, all of the time. That's right. It's. A I think point. most people, mm -hmm. most people. When you think about it, George, when you you know you turn on the light and you turn on your gas stove, most people think it's just good. That's not a political thing, okay? I mean, I think most people have that kind of sense. You know, we just want to have it here, okay? Right. And then, so what they're doing is what uh, the, the administration is just trivializing the basic needs of people in, in a modern society. Right. It's, it's it's really quite scary to what length. I mean, I'm trying to avoid World War Three. It seems to me you're doing everything possible to get right. us there. 
That's exactly it. And that's and that's the thing. You know, NATO is saying what we, you know, our, our policy in Ukraine is to avoid escalation. The, you know, the Stoltenberg, how many times has Stoltenberg said we're trying to avoid escalation uh, in, in Ukraine? So if you leave, they'll, it will de-escalate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to avoid World War Three. So you know, I'm sending, I'm sending Israel everything he wants because I'm just, I, I just, I'm just worried about World War Three. Um, <laughs> remember, remember when, when was it? Biden, I think it was about a year ago when he gave that speech and he said, "We are now closer to a nuclear apocalypse than at any time since the Cuban Missile Crisis." Well, why is that? I mean, <laughs> who got us into this position? He said, no, no, you know, it's like, this is really very worrying. And then he gets this favorable coverage, you know, well, Biden, Biden warns against the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah, and then he trips up. He goes from, you know, the um, uh, um, being in line for the next Nobel Peace Prize to being genocide Joe. It doesn't happen by accident. No, that, that's, no. not, that's not a, um, a, a, a Kremlin talking point, okay? It's a reality, okay? It's it's, it's just, but these articles, well, these articles you, we we did today. This is this kind of um, uh, analytical soft propaganda. You know how it is. You know, it it, it, it these people. You know, they they're assigned. You know, I need two pieces on pipelines, okay? Right. And it's right. purely defensive. Remember that. That's right. Well, yeah, that, 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 that's okay. but, but but it's still it's still very interesting how you know the U.S. policymakers. Are thinking. I mean, when they say this is a good bargain, that they, that's what they think. This is a good bargain. I mean, this was, you know, Mitt Romney said this. This is a great bargain. I think one one of those um, uh, was it Blue, Richard Blumenthal Richard or Blumenthal. Yeah. Great and bargain. Then, uh, and then um, um, uh, Lindsey, Lindsey Graham, Graham said the Lindsey same Graham thing. Lindsey Graham was a great bargain. That's what they think. I mean, I mean, you know, they're just they're blurting out what they think. This is a good bargain. Well, what about all these people killed? Oh, okay. Well, let's just hope they can keep this war going and uh, and and just only three percent of the defense budget, George. It's a great bargain. <laughs> that's well, that's great. cold comfort to all the widows. You're right, it's mothers. cold comfort for the widows, and you know, and the money, money. You know, Americans just burn money. I mean, you know, they, they just have money to burn. I mean, they can just print some more, and that's all there is. It if and this inflation. Okay, well, somebody's going to pay for it. I mean, you know, the senators are all right. You know, they 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 they. <laughs> Their pay is inflation uh, uh, measures. It's tied so, to it. Yeah, it's like, it's exactly. Like a so they don't they don't have to worry about it. Uh, so they have so say, great. We'll now we'll we will control the energy consumption of Europe. That is a good bargain. I mean, they they've never done that before. Uh, this time they're going to pull this off. You know, remember Reagan tried to do that. He couldn't do it. You know, he wanted he wanted the West West Germany to stop the um, the gas pipeline deal with the Soviet Union. Reagan had to back down. This time they're going to say, boom, we're just going to cut, cut you off. We're going to control your energy imports. Great, great bargain. Well, to end here, um, depending on what happens in Ukraine, we'll see if these um, uh, bargain deals uh, will go forward. I think uh, this is it's a lot of wishful thinking on their part right now. And again, you know, George and I like to have, you know, limited levity in all of this. But like that last article doesn't even consider what Russia's energy policy is, what China's energy policy is, what India's in, uh, um, po uh, energy policy is. All these other players that they can't control, they ignore, which is just infantile analytical right. thinking. Right, right. Well, but I think I th ultimately, I think the goal is um, to control all of the world's energy uh, supplies. I mean, it's like going back to um, Paul Wolfowitz's 1991 full spectrum dominance plan. You know, the, we control all of it. So we first will get Europe, then they're going to try and control uh, Asia's uh, energy. One uh, of the most entertaining supplies. books you can ever read is The Prize. Um, I, do you remember who wrote that? Who wrote yeah, that? Yeah, Daniel Jurgen. Daniel Jurgen. I think they even, I think he even updated it. Okay. But I mean, if you want a really rich, like um, drama-driven nonfiction book. The prize is a really good one to read, okay? And it's all about energy domination. That's all what it's about, okay? And it, in, in the way he's a good writer, it's good, it's good storyline, it's very vivid. You know, if you, you don't wanna uh, listen to academic papers and all that, read that book. That's, <laughs> that's all you need to know. All right, everybody, we got to keep on. We, 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 George and I have some kind of special interest in energy politics. We default there all of the time. Uh, I'm glad George is scurrying through the internet, finding these wonderful articles for us to dissect. Okay. All right. This is a gaggle with Peter and George. We are on locals. Come on. It's your cue, buddy. Um, <laughs> we're on locals. So please go to thegaggle.locals.com. And this is Monday. And tomorrow will be George's live stream at three.
See ya. 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Please join me with comments, criticisms, suggestions, ideas, and then think about little body because one says, yeah, energy. Winter is here. I need a lot of energy and that costs money. So I need that tip jar moving in the right direction. Otherwise, you know, I don't need them to get cold this winter. So uh, we don't want Buddy getting cold. So, you know, we need some um, uh, coins in his tip jar. Otherwise, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a real problem. So uh, we're very grateful for all of your help, friendship and support. The more you're able to donate, the more of these videos we can make, the more we can improve the technology. And above all, you know, you know, we'll manage to keep Buddy warm this winter, which is very, very important. So remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.